I'm Dave Collins with cleverhacker.com, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at lightweight footwear and trekking pole options. When it comes to energy savings while backpacking, choosing lightweight footwear is going to be one of the most important decisions that you make. As far as energy consumption goes, carrying weight on your feet is very costly. In fact, it's about four to six times more costly than carrying the same amount of weight in your backpack. When I switched from hiking boots to trail running shoes, I saved almost three pounds, which is the equivalent of carrying 12 to 18 pounds in my backpack. Some hikers still swear by boots, but most lightweight backpackers have decided to leave them at home and take running shoes or trail runners with them. If you're not carrying a heavy pack, you don't need the extra ankle support of boots. Boots are also expensive and are gonna take a long time to break in. Even after boots are broken in, they can still cause blisters. I had a pair of boots for years and any time I tried to hike big miles, I always tore my feet up. Another thing about boots is that they don't breathe very well, so even in dry weather, your feet are going to get wet from sweat. Also, when it's raining and you get wet boots, they stay wet and really heavy. A much better option is a lightweight, quick drying, comfortable shoe like trail runners or running shoes. I hiked the entire Pacific Crest Trail in trail running shoes. I forded rivers, summited mountains, crossed snow fields, and even hiked entire weeks in the rain. Never once did I wish that I had a pair of boots. With running shoes, on most days, your feet are gonna stay dry through ventilation. When it rains, they'll get wet, but they're still comfortable to hike in and they'll dry very quickly. When choosing a backpacking shoe, look for one that's comfortable with a soft, thick sole and good traction on the bottom. You're also going to want to make sure you don't choose anything that's going to require a break-in period. It should feel comfortable the moment you put it on. Your backpacking shoes will compress over time, but they'll usually last around 5 or 600 trail miles. You might also want to choose a shoe that's about half size larger than what you normally wear, because your feet tend to swell over long days of hiking. When it comes to choosing between running shoes, trail runners, or some form of hybrid, I almost always choose trail running shoes because they're very durable and really lightweight. Socks are another important consideration for comfort. If you're not using boots, you won't need heavy wool socks and liners to protect your feet. You can use small synthetic socks with good padding, and a light pair of trail gaiters will help keep debris out of your feet. Camp shoes should be considered optional, but they can come in handy, especially on wet trips. Most ultralight hikers choose to leave them at home, because they're already wearing pretty comfortable running shoes. Now let's take a look at lightweight trekking pole options. Trekking poles shouldn't be considered essential, but many backpackers do find that they like them to ease the pain in their knees, especially on long uphill and downhill sections. They can be used to increase balance, especially when crossing streams, snow fields, or on loose gravel. You can also use them as a support for an ultralight shelter. Your main choice with trekking poles is between carbon fiber and aluminum. Carbon fiber is gonna be lighter, but it's also gonna cost more and be a little more fragile. You're gonna want length adjustable poles with a comfortable handle. Flick locks as opposed to twist locks tend to be a nice choice because they require a little less maintenance. You're also going to want to be careful with your trekking poles because they can be fragile and they can break, especially when getting stuck in rocks or if you're falling down. Trekking poles are actually going to increase the amount of energy that you expend through more arm movements while you hike. But people who like them say the trade-off is well worth it for the pain that they save in their knees. They're going to occupy your hands, which means that getting a water bottle out or checking a map or taking pictures is going to be a little bit more cumbersome. 
They also lead to a little bit of arm fatigue. And when your arms get tired, you'll probably throw them on your pack, which is gonna increase your weight a little bit. A large portion of the lightweight backpacking community really loves trekking poles. Personally, I like to keep my hands free on the trail, so I don't usually bring them when I go out. Hopefully that gives you some great ideas on how to stay light and agile on the trail. Leave those boots at home and come join us for a blister free hike. I'm Dave Collins for cleverhiker.com. Hike light, hike smart, and have fun.